In this guide, we are going to build out the registrations controller so users can create accounts in our system via the API. And then we'll see how far we can get along with some of the other features that are needed, such as having an endpoint to check if a user is authenticated or not. So let's get started on this. I'm going to open up the routes file and then let's create a, another resource here. So resources, registrations, and once again, we're going to say we only care about the create action right now. And now we can actually go out and create the registration controller. Controller, registrations, controller. And now let's define that registrations controller and this is going to also inherit from application controller and we now can define that create action so with this step we are going to be able to tie directly into the active record create process so what we can do is a user equals user dot create and I'm going to do it the bang just so we can see if there are any errors and now I'll say the email is going to be from params user email. Once again, this is going to be determined by what you want to give it and how you want to structure your data. And then password is going to be params user password. And then the next one will be password params and I can actually just copy this and now this is, and then make sure you close off your parens now with this password the next one we have the password confirmation you have a couple options here so rails requires for the new registrations that you have a password confirmation it's up to you and your front-end application on if you want to require the user to do that if you do then you can just add in password confirmation as a third parameter there if for some reason you want to just allow them to type their email and password when they sign up then you could just duplicate that password call right there and that's fine but i'm going to leave the confirmation in there and now we can check and say okay if that user was created then i want to do the same thing we did with the sessions controller so i'm going to say session I want to set the user ID in the session to user.id and then I'm also going to render JSON data back and this is just going to be status created and then let's say that we pass in the user and that will be the whole user object. Now if that did not happen then we want to render JSON of status 500 because if they were not able to create a user it means that some something happened some kind of error happened and you could also put here for the status you could put the unprocessable entity error uh, that one's up to you on how you want to manage your own errors okay so now that we have this let's open up the application controller so you can go to controllers, application controller, and we need to put a little flag in here. We need to say skip before action. And then we want to, the action we're wanting to skip is the verify authenticity token, authenticity, if I can spell that right, token. We'll see when we test this out if it works. All this is doing is that Rails has a set of rules whenever we're trying to communicate with a route. One of those rules is that they use what is called a CSRF token. And so that is a token that is generated by the system. It's generated, it's secure, it's generated through our secret key value. And it checks to make sure that a user who's typing into a Rails form is actually the real user. It's not someone hijacking their system. But with an API, the all of that logic happens in a completely different app. So we need to skip that process here. 
Okay, with all of this in place, let's test out our system. So I'm going to start up the Rails server, and in a different pane here, I'm going to launch a curl command. So for curl, I'm going to say I want to curl. This is going to be with a header, and the header value is content-type. And this is passed in as a string, as you can see, application slash JSON, and then a just do a uh, backslash like that, just so you can move on to a different line. And the request is going to be post. Data is going to be all, just some type of user. So this is going to be the user that we already created, and it'll be structured like JSON. So I'll say this is our user, and then they have a email. And this all has to be valid JSON. So wrap up each one of the those keys in a string. And I believe I used z at dev.com and then a password. Close that off of ASDF, ASDF, and then make sure you close off both of those curly brackets and end the string. So that is our data. And then the last thing we have to define, oh, I just messed it up. Okay, let's go again. There we go. And so the next line is going to be the actual link where we're at, which is localhost. So HTTP colon slash slash localhost. 3000 slash sessions because we're checking our login here. So now if we run this, you can see we hit the API and look at that. We got back what we we're looking for. We have the status is created, logged in is true, the user, and we got our ID, our email, everything like that. So this is working perfectly. And in the show notes, as always, I'll put that curl command so you don't have to type all of that manually. You can also type and do the same thing for registrations. And let's now get going on the rest of the application. So I next want to update the routes. And so we have our session, so we have the ability to log in and we have the ability to create accounts. Now what we need to add in is the ability to check to see if a user is logged in or not, and then also to log them out. So I'm going to add a couple more routes here. The first one is going to be a delete route, and I'm just going to call it log out, and that's going to be mapped to sessions, and then this will be just a log out action, and the next one will be get logged in. And this will be mapped to sessions logged in. So we're going to add a git route and a delete route to our sessions controller. So let's open this up and not session store, session controller. And now let's get to adding those in. So the first thing that we want to do here is for the logged in route, I'm going to say def logged in and I'm going to add a concern and the reason I'm going to add a concern is because what we want to do is if you've built other Rails apps before and you've used tools like Devise, Devise gives you the really handy feature of checking to see inside your controllers and even in your views if there's a current user and it gives you all of their values. Well, I want to give us the same ability. So our logged in is going to check to see if a current user is available. So we need to create that. And so I think it makes the most sense to create a concern for that so that not just our logged in method, but any methods can check to see if a user is logged in or not. So let me just create that down below app controllers concerns and we'll call this the or let's call it the current user concern current user concern dot rb and the naming with 
any Rails files is very important. So however you name your file, make sure that you separate the words out with underscores. And then when you create the module or the class name, you're using that same naming structure, except instead of using underscores, each word or each letter for the first word goes and has a capital. So now we have our current user concern, and this is going to be a module. So I'll say module current user concern, and this is going to extend active support concern. And now inside of here, we're going to add a before action. So included block before action, and then we want to set current user. And now we can create that method. So def set current user. And then we all we have to do here, it's a very simple method. We just say if session user ID. And then we say if that exists, then we want to set an instance variable. So I'll say current user equals user find and then not, oh yeah, we don't do params, we want to do session, find, and then we can do session user ID. Just like this. Okay, that's all we need to do. And that's pretty cool. This is one of the reasons why I love building my authentication this way and leveraging the session is because all we have to do is check to see, okay, do we have a user ID in the session? We do? Okay, awesome. Now we can actually just use this to query the user, set this instance variable, and now any method in our entire application, it doesn't have to do things like checking to see if a JWT token is valid or anything like that. It just checks to see, do I have a current user? I do. Okay, let's keep building. Okay, now with that in place, now our logged in method can become relatively straightforward. We can say if current user and then we can have some logic happening here. Don't forget, like I almost forgot, to import our concern here. So make sure you say include, and you want to include the current user concern here at the top. And so now we can go, let me hide our create method. So now we can add the logic in here. So it's pretty basic. I can say render JSON. And then we simply want to say logged in is true. And then the user is current user. So if they are logged in, we saw their session ID, we saw they are in a valid session, which means they're logged in, then we can just send this back. We can say, yes, they're logged in. And here is their user account. So that's the first part. Now the next one is if they're not logged in. So if we don't have a current user, then I'm going to say else, I want you to render JSON and say logged in is false. And that's all we need to do. Now with this logged in method, the reason why I'm not sending some kind of status, an HTTP status or something, is because this is a get request. There is, the only status you'd send would be the same for both of them. And so, because we're not creating anything, we're not editing anything, we're simply asking a question. We're just saying, are they logged in? Yes or no? And that's it. Okay, so this is our logged in method, it's done. Now let's create a logout method def logout. And this one's very straightforward. We just say reset the session and then render JSON and we'll say status of 200. You could also say, you could, we could also do something like say logged out is true. And so now the API will be able to send this response back and the front end app will say, okay, we are sure that they are logged out. We will close off all of the routes or do whatever it is you want to do whenever you are logging someone out on the front end portion of the app. And here they have a way of checking and verifying that. So if you went through all of this, guess what? The 
entire system is done. We, you've built out a full authentication system. So fantastic work. And now I'm going to, in the next guide, we're going to just build a very basic React application that is going to connect with this. Just so even though I've shown you everything you need to do on the Rails side, I want you to be able to see how you can test this and see a working example of a React application. And you could apply this to Angular, Vue, or anything like that, where you connect, you hit these endpoints, you log user in, you allow them to register, and you give the ability to log out.